now I, I just now noticed. If you look at the right boot, the uh, the cuff at the top of the boot, it has no texturing on the underside. I mean, on the inside. There's no texturing, so you can just see straight through it. I never noticed that. Is it like that on the left boot? I mean, surely it would be. There's one way to tell if I can get a good angle. Yep, it's like that on both boots. Man, that's weird. <clears throat> Give me one second. Yep, okay, I'm just gonna do that. Okay. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> that is so bizarre. I've never noticed that. It's amazing, you know, after all these years, you can still manage to learn something new about the game that you played like a billion times. So anyways, you may or may not remember. You probably don't remember, because it's been a while since I recorded. Uh, last time I left off, I am facing the current threat, which is this big motherfucker. Let's pull him on up here so we have some room to work with. I get an idea for my dodge, okay. Alright, let's go. Mm. Yeah, you can see we're doing very little damage to him. Okay. Now, obviously, the way you're supposed to do this is... Ooh, hello there. Just strafe around him. <laughs> mm -hmm. There we go. Uh-oh. Didn't expect him to block that one. There we go. Don't mind me there, buddy. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Alright, that was a little awkward. Hey, Teague. You're just in time. I'm trying to show old Havel here what for. Hello? Oh! <laughs> there we go. That's what we want. That's what we want. Ow. Boom. Bada bing, baby. There we go. That's what we want. That's what we want. That's what we want. It's amazing. It's amazing. There we go. Don't worry. This will be over very shortly. Yep. Ah! Okay. Well, I told you it would be over shortly, didn't I? Alright, then. <clears throat> Settle in, everybody. This is going to take a minute. Let's see here. Do I? Hello? Oh, yeah, I forgot about you guys. God knows how. Wow, it's almost as if I haven't done this in a while. <clears throat> ah, cripes. How dare you evade me? There we go. That's right, that's right, okay. Come on. I mentioned before how much I love the S-Talk. I mean, I know it's not the greatest weapon, and I'm obviously going to ditch it at some point, but man, that's a good weapon for the early game. Like, if you never played Dark Souls, like, at all... Ah! What? Where? What? When? What? They've never done that before! Well, I mean, they don't normally do that. It was not, like, part of their... Pathing! Oh, God. How dare you? How dare you? Do you know who I am? I'm the protagonist. Character. Ugh, welcome back to Dark Souls, everybody. Oh, sick, I got a helmet. What's my equipment load like? 
Uh, oh wow, I've got a lot of wiggle room on my on my equipment load. Oh yeah, I got this really. Ooh, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good at all. So let's see here. What's my? Okay, so. Hmm. I'm not using my bow right now, so I could get rid of that. I'm not using. Well, I only will be using my magic. Get rid of my gloves. No, it's not going to work out. I could go shirtless. No, it's not quite enough. I'm trying to think about like how I can get the fast roll. There we go. And see that this particular evasion is much um, quicker. Which might help me out in the fight against Havel, because, I mean... I'm not exactly... Uh, my armor is so weak against him that wearing it isn't really helping me out that much. Come along. Oh, no, you don't. Get it. Oh, hello. Hey, the long sword. All right. Yep. There we go. That's that's nice and swift. Okay. So hopefully this this will help me out in the coming fight. Though I'm wondering if it wouldn't be prudent. Okay. Well, I'll think about it. Uh, now, of course, I've already talked about this before, but. A good strategy for dealing with Havel is you draw him up here so that whenever you die, inevitably, or, you know, if you die, I guess I should say, you can at least come back and get your souls relatively easily. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's going to help out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Alright. Buckle in, everybody. This is gonna take a second. Yep. Swiftness really is the way to deal with him. Come on. Ugh, I, I forgot how good the fast roll was in Dark Souls 1. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, for a second there I thought I didn't make that. Oh, hell no. He was trying to cast the uh, stone skin thing on him himself. His shield has a special ability where uh, he can cast something called stone skin where he just gains really nutso. Well, technically this isn't the first game, no. This is Demon Souls is the first game in the Souls game lineage. It's just the first Dark Souls game. I'm really proud of myself for parrying him like three times in a row earlier, but this is the safer bet. Good thing this isn't like Dark Souls 3 or something, otherwise these hits would be tracking like nuts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Help me. No, man. I've got this. I got this. I got it. See? Look at me. Look at how much I got this under control. Oh, it was... No, stop that. Stop it. Come on. We're almost there. Almost there. Come on. Uh-uh.
This is so entertaining, I can only imagine. Almost there, one more, one more. No. Are you done? I think he's done. Yes, he's done, okay. So anyways, that's roughly how you beat this mini boss. It's fine. And that's, the, you do this early on so you can go ahead and get this ring here. And there's no reason not to put, go ahead and put it on right now. And what this ring does is basically just, it increases your equipment load. See, I go from having 50 to having 75. And because of that, I can go ahead and have the fast roll even with all my clothes on, which is pretty nifty. But, of course, you also go ahead and beat him early on. Because, <clears throat> if you have the master key, like I do, because I'm a thief, and a good rogue. Is there any item over here? No. Uh, you can go ahead and have access to the Dark Root Basin nice and early on. Let's see here. There is one thing we need to go take care of. Wait a minute. Am I going to want to do this? This might be a mistake. I might not actually be wanting to do this right now. There is there is some armor that I want to go ahead and go get. Ugh, the fast roll is pretty satisfying, but the thing is, in Dark Souls 1, in order to keep the fast roll, you have to keep at 25% of your equipment load. Right. Wow, you're, uh, you're really going for it there, bud, aren't you? Oh, no. No, changed his mind. He lost interest. Let's see here, is this the right way? Yes, yes. Okay, I know where I'm going. See, the thing is, because I've played this game so many times, I know exactly how to, you know, to go, where to go, I mean, to go get what I want. Oh, no, you, come here. Come here. Stay. A little bit more, a little bit more. This is a strong one. Ah, I got him. Awesome. That's useful. It'll be more useful later. Oh, wait a minute, that's right. I wanna have the, uh... I wanna go ahead and have this short bow equipped. Am I still fast roll? Yeah, I'm still fast roll. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. In later Souls games, they kind of ditch the idea of the fast roll. In Dark Souls 2, instead of having, like, variations on your roll speed, it's uh, a variation on your roll distance. Now let's see here. This is gonna be kind of tricky. Because these guys have really high physical... Oh dear. Oh dear. Hello. Oh! Aww! Cripes. Well anyways, those guys are treants and they have really high physical defense. <clears throat> Let's see here. Pow! Oh, really? Really, Dark Souls? God. I have always hated the hitbox detection in these games. Come on. Come on. Nope, that's enough. Thank you. Hmm? Come here. No, come on. Come on. Nope, that's enough. Thank you. Here. Go ahead and you. I can adjust my aim a little bit. Wow, well, really? There we go. Now that'll get his attention, and he'll be like, "Oh, I'm gonna go get her." She just shot me in the face. So this is kind of one of the real reasons why you use a bow and arrow in this game. Obviously, it's not to fight with. Although it can still be good for damage. Depending on the bow. What? How did you avoid that? No, no, that's no. You're done. That's enough out of you. The thing is, I just want to go ahead and go get this armor. Because it's going to be the armor that I use by and large. No, stop it. Stop. 
Stop it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Come on. Oh, wow. How many feet was that? No, stop. That's enough. Just attack of the leaping zombies. Flying something like six feet at least to just come at me. Alright, that's enough out of here. I really want those souls more than anything at this point, though. Because those souls are just going to be really uh, good to have this early on. It's a good amount of souls, and losing them would be a problem. I'm going to go ahead and top off the old health there. Hi there, buddy. Pow. <laughs> oh, he didn't like that. Come on. I love that that this right here, blocking and hitting behind the shield, I love that that used to be a legitimate strategy, something that you could actually utilize. Where it, and you, you could in Dark Souls 2 as well, to a lesser extent. And in fact, in Dark Souls 2, it was probably even more of a legitimate strategy because um, of lances. If I'm not mistaken, I think lances could do uh, this maneuver here, where you're blocking and attacking at the same time. I believe that's the case. But the thing is, most lances were... Uh, well, not most of them, but there, are, there were a couple lances that were strength-based. And if you have high strength, you can go ahead and use a really big shield, which blocks better anyways. So that was totally a legitimate strategy that you could do, including in Dark Souls 2 as well. Not in Dark Souls 3, though. Mm -mm -mm. No, can't play the game how you want to play the game. Oh, goodness, no. God forbid. Hmm. How many deaths does that make now? God, I don't even know. I don't remember how many times I died in the first episode. It was probably several. Oh well. I'm not even going to bother trying to keep up with how many times I died in a, in a Souls game. Or at least in a, in a Let's Play fashion. Because if I... In order to do that, I would have to meticulously go back over each and every episode. And I'm not going to do that. I'm just not. Fun thing, fun thing though. Oh, that uh, that end may already be active. Well, okay. Here's what we're gonna do. Grab this. I said we're gonna grab this. Come on. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and draw them back. Yeah. See, these guys have really high piercing defense at least, and that's what my sword is doing is piercing defense. Come on. You'll notice that this doesn't take any stamina. It just takes the, uh, the spell slot. Okay. Alright. Alright. And okay. Now there's just a couple more of those guys standing between me and my ultimate goal here. And the thing is, I just, I want to get this armor as soon as possible. I'm not going to wear it right away, but I want to just, I want to have it. Let's see here. Good thing I'm not human, because this, this area in particular is, like, infamous for being invaded by other players. Okay, you can kind of see one moving in the distance there, but here's a fun little trick. Yep. That was a that was a guy. That is a pretty good little trick. Uh, 
Let's go ahead and get away from the cliffs that I can fall off of and die again. Alright, one down. As you can kind of tell, these enemies are a bit advanced for how far I should be so in the game right now. Because you're really not supposed to come here until a little bit later. But that's one of the good thing one of the things that I really appreciate about Dark Souls 1 is that um, there's a lot less linearity. Like once you oh, excuse me, once you've gone around the game once or twice you can uh, learn the various paths. I'm gonna get these off my hotbar. Once you learn the various paths, you can figure out how to go to a specific place to get an item that you want for a build very easily. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. That's a trap, by the way. That right there, that's a trap. We're gonna ignore that. All right. Okay, now, that is the item right over there. Now all I want to do is run over there, and grab that item, and then get the heck on out of here. There we go. Got it. Oh, God. Mm. Okay. All right. We are now more or less home free. <laughs> now I just have to find the, uh, the way back, unfortunately. <laughs> Is that guy still following me? This one trend is still following me. Let's see how far I can take him. I'm really curious about it now. Hello? Hmm? Well, sounds like he's giving up. Let's see, there's one other thing that I want to do here while I'm here. And it's that... Where is it? It's that item right down there, and I have to remember how to get it. Let's see here. Ah, there it is. Okay. The leather armor, the long bow, and some feather arrows. Now I have a better bow. Mm -hmm. Am I still fast? I'm still fast roll. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. There's one. Now that down there is a thing that I will deal with a little bit later. And so is the area that I just came through to get this armor I picked up. But, okay, now that's all taken care of. Now we get ready to go ahead and actually make some kind of progress. That was a fun little diversion. So, here's what I went ahead and picked up while I was down there. The Elite Knight Armor. So, I'm going to be sacrificing some of my fast roll, absolutely. But, let's see, do I even need Hail's Ring to do this? 
Yeah, okay. I need Cable's Ring to do this, because it's, it's above half, so... So I'm back to the medium roll, but... I've got the knight armor. The elite knight armor, anyways. Let's see here. <clears throat> Helm of a Nameless Knight, perhaps an elite knight of Astora. Although he was loath to give up on his undead mission, he perished at the Undead Asylum and went hollow. Does that sound familiar? Hmm, well, perhaps it should, because that this is the armor set of Oscar of Astora. The, uh, the fellow who came to the Undead Asylum and let us out. Hmm, I wonder. Oh, hello. Um, why are you alive? You're really not supposed to be, you know? Perhaps I've reset the zone. Maybe. Are the others still alive? Everyone else is alive now. But Hang on a second. <laughs> he can still see me, but if I go in through the doorway here, he disappears. And so does some of the zone a little bit. Oh dear, mm, that's one of those things. That's just one of those things. Now, for the time being, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Um, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. How dare you? How dare you come in on a lady changing her clothes? For the time being, I do kind of want to rock some lighter armor just for the, uh, sake of having that better roll. But I guess I better not do that for too long, because then I'll get used to it. So let's see here. No, I need to go much lighter than that. Oh. Is that still? Yep, yeah, okay. We're good. Is this is this gonna be pushing it too much? Probably, yeah. That's a little bit too much. What? I'll pull the phone here. Oh. These gloves are actually heavier. And the protection on them is worse. Hmm. Ah, for God's sake, what just hit me? Is it that crossbow guy over there? The one that's outside the draw distance? Can he hit me from there? Well, not from that angle. Oh, well. Alright. That's enough dress up. Fast roll. Let's just rock some different clothes for a little bit. So let's see. Is this one? No, it's not this one. Hello? Oh, wait a minute. Yes, that's right. I've already done the Tauros Demon. Oh, God, I forgot all about that. I'm going in the wrong direction. I've already done this part. Well, I forgot. Oh, well. Let's see here. So, uh, oh, crud. I'm gonna have to find my way through here backwards. Alright, come on. Oh my god, they're synchronized. I'm so impressed. Hi there, buddy. Oh, and you brought a friend. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, this is awkward. Hmm. How does this look? Bad. I'll go ahead and rock this for now, because I think I need to get used to the mid-roll. As much as I like the fast roll, I'd better not get used to it, because I'm not going to have it forever. But at the same time, like I said, I don't feel like putting on the whole set, because I just got it. And I am still pretty early on in the game. Oh dear. Mm. Hello? Hello? Mm. Yes, the long sword. Okay. Hi. Yes, yes, that's enough out of you. Right, now your friend. Where is he? All done, are you? Okay. Now. Ignore it. Oh, for God's sake. I said we can go ahead and ignore these guys. Right. Oh, for goodness sake, really? No, no, you're done. Okay. So I got everything I need from here. All right. Now, as you can see, there are a plethora of reasons as to why I've done this. Let's see, do I have any other spells? No, just just a soul there, I. Okay. All right. Now, for the fun part. So let's see here. Vitality. That's health. Attunement is how many spells you can equip. Endurance is your stamina and your equipment load, which is all the gear that you could actively wear and use. Strength, self-explanatory. Dexterity, self-explanatory. Uh, resistance, don't even, don't even touch this. It's, it's basically useless. The thing is, resistance, it, it, it's literally your resistances. If you really want to, you can just slap a whole bunch of points and your character will become naturally better at taking damage. I don't recommend doing that, though, because you're going to get better equipment anyways. So there's really not a whole lot of point in doing that, in my opinion. Nice and even. Nice and even. Dexterity. Hmm. Something's going to have to go uneven. I don't like that. I guess we'll go ahead and put that at 19 for now. Alright. We're on our way. We're making progress. Alright, now let's go ahead and make our way over to the Undead Parish. How long have we been going? About 30 minutes? Okay. So, let's see here. I think I've already talked about... Did I get that bonfire over there? I think I... I must not have, then. Alright, here's what you do to deal with this. Shoot him once. And then just run under his feet. Ow. And you come over here. And he's going to be so mad that you're in a spot that he can't reach you that, he'll just piss off. And that's the real way to deal with the Hell Kite Wyvern. And I can't really use this because I'm not cool enough. But this is the, uh, the statue for the Sunlight Warrior Covenant. I can't really bother with it because I, I don't have enough faith. In Dark Souls 1, the Sunlight Warrior Covenant had a faith requirement. And there's a mechanic another mechanic that the game doesn't tell you about where the more times you um, oh god what's the word I'm looking for every time you complete a boss fight with a sunlight warrior in your group the faith requirement go do goes down by five okay okay that's how that works it's interesting 
Yeah. Not that interesting. But it is interesting. And that dragon already killed all the guys for me. Okay. And that's how you get those two things right there. That's how you get the claymore, for example. I don't really need it. Okay. We're good. Wait, how much do I need to level up real quick? Over 2,000? Okay. Yep. Oh, I love this next stretch of game. I love it so much. But real quick, before I go and do that, are you going to come down and fight me? No, not yet? Okay. So down there is a bunch of rats, and if I had gone under the bridge, I would have to go through the rats and climb that ladder. Fun thing about this ladder, too, if you're... If you're, if you're using Dark Souls, the Dark Souls Fix mod, which I am, and you're running the game at 60 frames a second, this ladder will consistently drop you through the world if you slide down it. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, I, I've tried it, and that ladder in particular consistently drops me through the world. Alright. Here we go. Here we go. Are you ready? Ah, oh, craps. Are you ready? It's time to fight a, a, another Black Knight with an even bigger sword. With the camera kind of like bugging out on you. With a, even less space to work with. Oh, how unfortunate for you. Ah, oh, it didn't work. You can really tell I've played this game a time or two. Cripes. Ah! Darn it. Oh my god. Oh god. Come on. Oh. Ah, oh, shit. So what ended up happening there was I kept getting stuck in this loop where I was trying to block him. Instead of dodging... So here's what we're gonna do about that. This fast roll worthy? Yeah, it is. Okay, we're gonna fast roll him, just like we did with Havel. If I had picked the Ranger starting class, I would already have this full set of equipment. <clears throat> aye, aye, aye. I'm trying to grab my stuff real quick, please. Excuse me. And I really don't want to use... Oh! Oh, good. Oh, good. Huh? No. Excuse me. Mm -mm. Oh, good. This is exactly what I wanted to happen. I'm trying not to use too many Estus charges, because that one... That fire there is not going to give me more. Ah! Hello! I've... I've never seen them do that before. How very bizarre. And of course, obviously, the last thing you want to do is try and fight the Black Knight on this staircase. Oh, hi. I say right before catching his attention on said staircase. Alright, come on. Come along downstairs, my friend. His footsteps are so big and imposing. Well, I messed that up. Ah, oh, crime and a. There we go. That's what I want. Oh, I should not have done that. Aw, oh, come on, man. All right. I'm, I'm wearing him down. Yeah, that'll wear him down. That'll wear him down, especially. There we go. That's what you want. 
That's what you want. Got him! Alright, for that I get the tight night chunk. Okay, cool. But now I'm not going to use up any more Estus. And... Okay. I can get my nice armored legs back on. I like the way these look. I really do. Okay. All right, you come here. So as you can see, I'm not really doing terribly too much more damage with the S talk, and it's because the S talk itself is not really that uh, much of an A lister, and for dexterity weapons. And then I want to watch guy in the background ran away from the fight. And if I just stay here and... Yep, there we go. The gate's closed. So that's an interesting little thing about this encounter in particular, is that that guy's AI is set up to try and get away from the fight and shut you in here with that big thing over there. Alright, come on. Come on. Come on. No, no. That's enough. Thank you, sir. Alright. That'll be enough from you, sir. Thank you. Obviously, it would not be, uh... It would not behoove me terribly to engage that thing toe-to-toe -to -toe like I normally would any other enemy type. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Getting in the true Dark Souls experience right here. how this thing combos. Light, heavy. Oh, don't don't go off the edge there, buddy. Now, these are what I need right here, but first this guy. There he is. This guy's smart enough to figure out how to come up here and get you. Unfortunately, he's not smart enough to figure out how to stop me from doing that. <clears throat> Alright. So here's something interesting. Obviously, you know, that big intimidating, spiky, armored boar thing. Uh, most players, when they see it, are not going to be like, I should go engage that thing head, head, head on, you know, obviously. So you come around a long way, and you find this... This corpse is actually wearing Baldur armor. I just thought about that. Ugh, God, excuse me. And it gives you these things. Oh, well, my goodness, now what does these do? I'll show you what they do. Just gotta line this up right. And... Hoop. The alluring skull lures enemies towards where you throw them. And it gives you four of them. And then the, uh, and then the iron boar's animation bugs out a little bit, but that's okay. That's okay. It's an old game. Don't worry about it. And... Hoop. And what you, what you do is you throw that down, and he's like, man, this fire, it said rude things about my mom. I'm going to kick its ass. And then he burns to death. And for some reason, a hollow comes out to breach you. Wow, I'm, I'm having a lot of things that don't usually happen, like ever, happen tonight. This is very strange. Hi there, buddy. Hi there, friend. Nope. Stop it. Stop. If I mention how much I love how this thing combos, it combos really well. Strong, light, strong. Oh, it just, it combos so beautifully. Alright. Alright, and... Yup. I'll go and use one more. I mean, I'm not really going to get too much more use out of these things. <laughs> Thanks, Fire. Fire, truly the most overpowered weapon a, Sol a Souls player could ever get their hands on. Now, normally the way it's supposed to go is... Hang on. 
Normally the way this is supposed to go is uh, that undead guy that came crawling up out of here is supposed to be standing like right here and as soon as you get down here you're like, oh I'm gonna fight this guy and he runs off. Specifically to lure you into this room that is uh, full of these guys. This is something that I do appreciate about Dark Souls 1, is that it actually puts a lot of thought into how its encounters are going to go down. Let's see here. Okay, I need that for something later, but I don't remember what. Well, I mean, I could always take a look at it. Try and figure it out. Uh, the mystery key resembles a basic prison cell key. The purpose of this key is unknown. It appears to be a basic prison cell key. Well, okay, that explains that, more or less. And in which case, I pretty much remember exactly what that's for. Hi there, buddy. I don't know. Overall, for the most part, of course, obviously, it's not true for the entire game. But I would say it's true of an awful lot of the game. It feels very methodical in its design and, and its encounters. It's like they really sat down and thought like, hmm, how's, what kind of encounter should we have here? The camera's uh, clipping into the ceiling there a little bit, but don't worry about that, don't worry about that. And, oh, hello. It's a bigger, better enemy. My goodness, what are we going to do about this? Uh-huh. That. That's what we're going to do about this. Now, later off screen, I'm going to go kill a ton of these guys. And that will be very boring, so I'm not going to make you watch it. But there's a reason for that. Let's see here, the night shield. Medium Metal Shield is elegantly carved and painted, although it is thought to have been used by ancient knights of the nobility. Its defense capabilities are similar to other shields. Kind of an interesting little description that more or less fits what this piece of equipment is. And it's, you know, it may look fancy, but it's really not that much better than other shields. And I like that that description is very apt to the truth of that. No. No, stop it. Stop. That's enough out of you. Okay, from over there I could see that there was a regular undead guy on my right, and if I remember correctly, there was one of these guys on the left. These guys are called Balder Knights, by the way, and they are one of the coolest enemies in the game. Or at least they're one of my favorites, anyways, personally, if I'm being honest. Oh. My, this is quite the uh, back and forth we have going here, isn't it? Oh dear. Got him. Okay. Boy, it sure is a good thing I'm using a thrusting sword and not an actual sword. But anyways, that brings me back to what I was saying and, oh, hello. No, no, stop. You are not coming along for this ride. Thank you. Okay, goodbye. What was I saying? Yes, okay. But I am going to kill a bunch of those guys off screen for one particular reason. They have the weapon that I want to use for this entire playthrough. There's a very specific weapon I want to use, and it's the reason I decide. one of the reasons why I decided to make this character for the sake of Let's Playing Dark Souls 1, a Dex character. So I'm going to need that later. And then pull this, and the gate opens. Unfortunately, that guy respawns, and he's still going to be obsessed with pulling this lever to shut out the player character. Ironically, even if the player character is already on this side of the gate. There we go, the halberd, yes. Mm. Very bizarre bit there. 
Now, I don't think I'm going to go ahead and kill the first boss in this episode. Hello? Oh, another one has come out to greet me. How unfortunate. This is the welcoming committee. Fun thing, these guys drop Titanite Shards. So you can farm them for that to upgrade your equipment. Let's see here. Let's see here. There's another interesting encounter. We have two guys with shields that are going to want to get up on you. And you have a guy with a crossbow over there, but you can pull these guys over here where the crossbow guy can't get to you. Again, I just, I, I really appreciate the methodical nature that, the, the methodical way, I should say, that encounters are designed. Oh, wow. Aren't you fancy? I'm also fancy. I'm fancier than you, asshole. Come along. That's, yep, no, no, stop. Stop resistance, no, stop. See, now what you're doing right now is very annoying. I'm trying to move on with my life, and you're just not allowing me. All right. <clears throat> well, I suppose I could go ahead and do the boss fight. But not after a couple things. Not after a couple things. Oh, get ready for one of the most annoying places in the game. Because you get to hear this all the fucking time. Ting, 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 ting. Every single time you come over here, you have to sit here and listen to this hammer going over and over again. But, I will go ahead and go talk to this fellow. And this fellow is... this guy. Well, you must be a new arrival. I'm Andre of Astora. If you require smithing, then speak to me. Alright. Now, fun thing. Uh, this guy will reinforce your weapons, and he will also modify them. They are different things. Also, I'll go ahead and get this gesture, why not? He also sells some things. Uh, the weapon smith box and the armor smith box, I'm gonna go ahead and grab real quick. Because I have enough for both of them, may as well. He also sells a few weapons, including the cestas, which are fist weapons, which are arguably the most useless thing in the entirety of Dark Souls 1. Uh, the pike is a pretty okay spear. It has a pretty unique move set on it. How am I for arrows? Oh, that's right, I bought a bunch of wooden arrows because I'm not really going to be using this for damage right now. But most importantly, he sells the Crest of Artorias. Crest opens a sealed door in the heart of the forest. This crest opens a door in the Darkroot Garden sealed by ancient magics. Ah, Darkroot Garden. That sh Does that sound familiar? It should. That's where I was just a minute ago to pick up this elite knight armor, which I decided not to wear just yet for some weird reason. I don't know, whatever. The door leads to the grave of Sir Artorias, the Abyss Walker. Many adventurers have, le have left for the grave, but none have returned, for they make easy prey for the local bandits. With such dangers, the crest can do more harm than good in the hands of the uninitiated. And yet, for some reason, here he is. He has it. Also, he sells Titanite shards, so if you do that, you gotta it. And of course, upgrading your stuff costs money. Now, I'm not gonna upgrade the S-Talk, because I'm not gonna be using it for much longer. Okay. You can also repair your equipment, but I can go ahead and do that myself. Now, after having after having purchased the uh, the weapon smith box and the armor smith box, I can reinforce my armor and weapons myself. But there's a catch. There are certain points of upgrading where there is a cap. And I will no longer be able to go past that unless I come back to a smith. So I can't, I'm not completely self-reliant, but I'm reliant on myself just enough. Okay, so let's see what else he has to say. Most weapons and armor are mighty sturdy indeed, but every hunk of metal has its breaking point. If you notice durability running low, 
It's time to repair. You can ask a blacksmith like myself, or do it on your own with a grindstone. The nice thing about weapons, they never betray you. So pay them a little respect, eh? Who hurt you, Andre? Who betrayed you? There are two types of weapon forging. There's reinforcement and there's ascension. Reinforcement is simple. It strengthens the weapon and nothing more. Mm -hmm. A simple task for any blacksmith. Hell, you could even do it yourself with a smith box. Mm -hmm. But ascension's a finer art. It alters a weapon's properties. Ascension is the territory of we blacksmiths. A smith box just won't do the trick. Start out with reinforcement. When that loses its charm, you can consider ascension. As you've noticed, this land is flush with the mad and wicked. Oh yeah. You won't make it through the night without employing my services. <laughs> Very sure of himself, this Andre. On, so let's see, if I go here... He did say his own name, didn't he? I don't know. Um... <clears throat> sorry about the microphone going off there for a second. I, uh... <clears throat> Took a swig of my drink and it didn't go down quite right. <clears throat> hmm. You can forge armor just like you do weapons. Forging armor is even easier than forging weapons. Whether you forge weapons or armor first, well, that's up to you. But nobody wants to see you go hollow. So whatever you do, you'd better do it well. <laughs> Let's see here, do I? No, that's right, that's right. Okay, um... Not my armor, either. My equipment's good. Now, something that should be noted is that all of this equipment over here against the wall, it's just there for show. It's just there to show you what the character is supposed to be. Uh, that sword, for example, with the golden cross guard, is the Balder side sword. Okay, as you can see here, sort of, he does not have the Balder side sword. That weapon right next to it is the rapier. And again, as you can see, he does not have the rapier. He doesn't have any of those shields over there. Doesn't have any of those weapons over there. He doesn't even have a crossbow, but there's a crossbow right there. This, it's right here. I'm looking at it right now. I'm standing directly in front of it. And this hammer and these axes, none of it for sale. I guess it's all equipment that he's not done messing with yet. Oh dear, am I stuck? Oh, I might be stuck, a little bit stuck. Okay, there we go. Anything else to say there, Andre? Hmm. You can forge whether you vote, so... <laughs> okay. All right. I'll be seeing you then. Be careful out there. Oh, well, don't worry, Andre. I'll be careful. What the fuck is this thing? Oh, I already know what this thing is, and I know that I'm not going to fight it just yet. Because my damage output is simply not good enough to deal with this thing. But for now, we're going to run straight on past it. Because I want to show you something. Ah, in the back. Anyways, this should look a little bit familiar. It should look a little bit familiar. Because... Come here, come here, you. This enemy should be familiar. This area should look familiar. Because this is the entrance to the Darkroot Garden. And I mainly did this to kind of show you that what I mean when I say, like, Dark Souls 1's game design is complex and intertwining. And here's a barrier so you don't go over there for some reason. Now, if I had wanted to, I could have gone down the tower, out by the basin, and come up over here and gone ahead and been in Andre's shop. The bonfire just above Andre's shop, I should say. Didn't do that. 
could have, though. And that's one of the things, again, like I was saying earlier, that I really appreciate about Dark Souls 1. Is that the level design is so dense and intertwining, and it's so, like, carefully thought out that, like I said a second ago, once you learn the ins and outs, you can kind of make your own way. Of course, the game does get a little bit more linear later on. Well, oh, sort of, in a way, but... <sighs> later Souls games do get a lot more linear than this. And it's time to talk to this guy. Here is a closed gate. And here is this guy, standing, sitting in front of the closed gate. Hmm. 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 Riveting conversation. I wonder if I can get a look inside his helmet there. I just can't... This is another good thing about Dark Souls 1. Even though the game may not, you know, have the, have the best graphics in the world. Is that the game is still detailed very minutely in some areas, like this right here. I, Skyrim, for example... For all, it, all its obsession with detail and what have you, could not do detail like this, where you could actually peer into a character's visor and see the character's face. Of course, it's not like that with every helmet. If I put on this helmet, you can't really see into that visor and see my face. Of course, there's really no reason I shouldn't be wearing this helmet just yet, but mm, whatever. I kind of want this to be something of a, of a, a slower transformation for the character into the n proper knight. Hmm. 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 Oh, -ho. forgive me. I was absorbed in thought. I am Ziegmeier of Katarina. Quite honestly, I've run flat up against a wall. Or a gate, I should say. The thing just won't budge, no matter how long I wait. And oh, have I waited. So, here I sit, in quite a pickle, weighing my options, so to speak. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> so, a couple things. First of all, this is Zingmar of Katarina, just like he said. This is easily one of the most popular games in the entirety of the first game. Second only to Solaire, of course. <clears throat> and, uh, this establishment of him as a character kind of really sets the tone for who he is and what he's going to be all about for the entirety of his time in the game. As he said himself, you know, I, I'm sitting here in front of this gate. This gate is an opening. But by his own admission, he's not really doing anything about it. And that is kind of the ultimate... What's the word? modus operandi, I guess, of his character, is that even though he will sell himself as this adventurous knight, he kind of sits here. He doesn't really do anything about stuff. He, he runs into problems, and he doesn't really do anything about them. Alright, you got anything else to say? Still closed. Still closed. Hmm. Still closed. Yeah, Still no. closed. Okay. Mm. Alright, all his dialogue is done for now. But that's the introduction to this character. And we'll see a little bit more of him later on. And... What was the other thing I was going to say? Ah, yes. But, as you, as you no doubt saw, or I should say heard, he, like many others, is punctuating his... Uh, his uh, thoughts and sentences with laughter. Again, just apropos of nothing, he's just laughing about the situation he's in. Now, that's something that's interesting about the overall tone of Dark Souls 1, is that it is it is very depressing, yes. Absolutely. There's, there's really no arguing about that. It is a depressing game. But... It's, um, what's interesting about it is that 
it's not simply depressed in the most obviously sense of it, like, oh, woe is, woe is us, there's nothing we can do about the situation we're in. But it's, it's not just depressing, but it's manic. And that's kind of what's interesting about it. And that's why I think the tone in Dark Souls 1 is a little bit more interesting than the tone in Dark Souls 2. Because in Dark Souls 2, it's, it's just more focused on how depressing it is to be in this situation. Aha! One of the mechanics of the game just happened. Whenever you kill enemies, there's a random chance that you can uh, get soft humanity to just come out of them as they die, and it, and you get it. And now I have a soft humanity. Now here comes this big fucker. Come here, buddy. Fun fact, these guys can be parried. You don't get a repost animation, so there's not really much point to doing it. Oh dear. These guys often get called Tower Knights. You might see why. One thing to note about his design is that his mace is, is huge. Not just because he himself is big and therefore is using a bigger version of any piece of equipment that I myself would use. But proportionally speaking, the mace head is as big as his own head, if not bigger. And that is kind of a, a, a thing about proportions in Dark Souls that I did talk about before. Is that, for the most part, things are as proportional as they should be. Or, if not, at least as close as you can typically get in a video game, anyways. But for some reason, for some reason, maces are just really bizarrely proportioned. Where they're, they're so much bigger than they would be in real life. The thing is, like, if you used a mace, if you, if you picked up a mace in one hand, but the mace head was as big as your own head, you couldn't really use it properly, because it would just be too big. Hmm. But, as you can see, he's nowhere near as tough as, some, as uh, Able to Rock, for example. Oh, that reminds me, I didn't read the the, uh, the description on, on Havel's, Havel's Ring. Havel's Ring, lose max equipment load. <coughs> this ring is named after Havel the Rock, Lord Quinn's old battlefield compatriot. Havel's men wore this ring to express faith in their leader and to carry a heavier load. So literally, he led people into battle, and they all used these blessed rings in order to carry more equipment into uh, combat. And there's lots of little details in Dark Souls 1 that I really like, because the thing is, like, in a setting like this, that is totally something that would happen. Let's see here. Alright, now we found this elevator here, yes? And it leads me back to the Firelink Shrine. So now I have a shortcut between areas. Petrus, you're still here. Okay. Oh, yeah, I don't really need to worry about that. Real quick, let's go ahead and see if What's-His-Name has anything new to say. How did that silly sorcerer's apprentice end up? You know, the one always prattling on about Master Logan. He left for the undead Berg, but never came back. Serves him right. If even old Big Hat can't make it out there, what chance does he have? I hope he enjoys his new life as a hollow. Okay, so now he's already talking about a character that I haven't even seen yet. But I will. I will. Hmm? What now? I'm not up for chatting. Leave me alone. Is it all he's got? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all he's got for now. Okay, that's fine. But now I can go ahead and abuse this this bonfire, which is stronger than the bonfire up at the now dead parish. All right. <clears throat> and 
let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and head on down and talk to Rickett one more time. I might be able to buy a spell from him. Fun fact. Um, it's kind of hard to notice because you're you're on a moving elevator, obviously. But some of these elevators in particular have these statues of ladies on them. On them? In in the shafts, I should say. Yes. Ah yes, Rick, here we go. Huh. Hello. Hi. I was beginning to wonder when you'd come. Have you materials? Well, go on. Show me. Uh, let's see here. Is there anything else I can buy from him? Uh, I don't really have enough for that. Well, I might. But I probably can't use it. That was an int requirement of 12. Hmm. Come back soon. Smithing helps soup. Don't let. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see here. My end is 12. Oh, I could use it. Well, let's just see what we can get up to real quick. So I need 4,000. Oh dear. Hmm. see here. Okay, yeah, I can, I can get this. No problem. Ah. Now, let's see here. Does he have any other dialogue for me? Hmm? What is it? There's nothing to talk about. We're both cursed. Undead. But what's there really to moan about? Hmm? What is it? There's nothing to talk about. Hmm, okay. So he's all done. Come back soon. Smithing helps soothe my nerves. Don't let me wither away out of idleness. You know, I ha Obviously he's not the most tragic character, but there is something incredibly tragic about Rickett. Specifically... The way he says, you know, please come back and give me something to do so I don't, in his own words, wither away out of idleness. Because the thing is, he's in that cage, and like I said before, there is a distinct possibility that he could get out of there if he wanted to. And by his own admission, he doesn't want to because if he comes out here, monsters are going to kill him and he's going to slowly wither away as he loses his humanity. Much like these guys here. I kind of like to think that everyone that's ever gone on, like, the, uh, the Bell mission, kind of like to think that maybe this is them, you know? And maybe this is where they've all come. So is there a way to... Ah, yeah, there we go. We can get the camera between the, uh, the wall and this guy. <laughs> now, one thing that is interesting to note in uh, relationship of this and Dark Souls 3 is that in Dark Souls 3, they talk about uh, undead with glowing eyes having been, um, um, having, <laughs> undead with glowing eyes, like this one here, are the ones in Dark Souls 3, they, they say, to have witnessed the uh, the abyss and come back, and the abyss is this kind of corrupting, dark, magical thing. It's very hard to describe the abyss. Just imagine if nothingness was a physical force. Yeah, I know exactly. It's it's a very contradictory concept, but it is what it is. But interestingly enough, in Dark Souls One, like. The eyeballs sink away and turn into little red glowy deals because they're just hollowed out. Like if I just... You can kind of still see his glowy eyes. Oh, let's 
Let's see. Is anybody else I can kind of get a look at? His eyes are glowing red. Ah, there we go. Same pose, more or less. Eyes glowing red. Their eyes are glowing red because they've just lost their humanity and gone hollow. There's nothing to do with uh, the abyss or anything like that, so I don't really know why they retcon that in Dark Souls 3. I don't even really know what it's supposed to imply. Having seen the abyss, eh, but yeah, I know. Uh, anyone who played Dark Souls 3 and is like, "Oh, they added re red glowy eye enemies," like, no, red glowy eyes have always been a thing in Dark Souls, even from Dark Souls 1. It's just that in Dark Souls 3, they gave it kind of a, uh, a mechanical meaning. Alright. But, uh, let's see here. What else is there for me to do? Hang on. I wonder if Petrus has anything new to say. Let's just check with him real quick. Oh, hello. Miracles, I presume? Sure. Yes, I know. That's no, I I'm afraid that may be difficult, for our missions are sacred. No, same thing as before. Okay. Come again. The effectiveness of the teachings depend upon your faith. I may have the voice volume turned up a little bit high. I think it might be a good idea to turn that down just a little bit. Okay. Did that actually go? Did that take? Yeah, okay. That's all good. I'm sure that'll be fine. It's just they're, they're a little bit loud in my ears, so I imagine anyone else is listening is probably finding them a little bit on the loud side as well. Alright. But, that's gonna just about do it for this episode. And when we come back next time, I'm probably gonna have a different sword. And, okay, so real quick, before I go, though, I will, I will say, here's this thing. Here's this item. I have not grabbed this item. I didn't grab this item for a very good reason. And that reason is that grabbing that item right now will not be useful to me. I mean, it would, but it wouldn't be. And I know that that's a really weird thing to say. But the thing is, I already know that the, grabbing this item triggers a certain sequence of events to go ahead and kind of go on. And I don't want that to happen just yet. And that's all I'm going to say about that for now. And of course, I will have to deal with that fellow and his little congregation of buddies. But, uh, that's going to do it for now. Of course, here's another statue of a woman holding a child. Oh, darn it. I just realized. Over by that bonfire where the sunlight altar was, there was another statue of a, uh, a woman holding a child. I forgot to mention. forgot to mention that. Ah, uh, and going over there would take time, and I, I, I don't have time for that. Uh, well, I will say real quick, though, and I don't know if they're the same models, but there's a similar statue like this one over where that shrine was. Uh, underneath where the dragon was hanging out. And if you look closely, obviously I can't really get the best angle from here because I'm below it. But if you look closely, that sword... Um, not on this statue, but on the other statue. That sword mirrors a particular sword used by somebody else in the game. And it's just kind of one of those interesting little details. Obviously, with certain other games having come out, 
We realize that certain theories are no longer possible, but in the context of this game alone, that much is interesting to think about. But I'll probably talk more about that later. So, thank you for watching. Thank you, and good night.